Our next record, Beach House is 7, which was released by Sub Pop, and on May 11th got an 8.9 BNM in a review by Jason Green. A little bit of background since blowing up with their sophomore LP, Devotion, from 2008, uh, and their instant classic follow-up, Teen Dream, from 2010, Beach House have been recognized as the best of modern dream pop and one of the defining indie bands of the last decade. Though they've earned rave reviews for every release since, the last few years were a little worrying for some people. On 2015's Depression Cherry and Thank Your Lucky Stars, they released two albums that year, uh, the Beach House formula was getting a little predictable, maybe, and 2016's B-Sides and Rarities compilation seemed to indicate uh, the well might be running dry. Fortunately, the band changed things up a bit for their newest album, Seven, by ditching longtime producer Chris Cody if I'm pronouncing it right, and instead collaborating with Sonic Boom, who has most notably worked with Panda Bear and MGMT. They also abandoned their practice of writing and rehearsing before entering the studio and instead wrote during the recording process itself, which allowed them to experiment with studio trickery that they won't necessarily be able to pull off live. The result is the, quote, heaviest and most immersive sounding album of the band's long career, which Pitchfork mentions in their glowing review. Um, indeed, Seven is currently the highest rated of all Beach House's albums on RateYourMusic.com, where it's also ranked as the third best album of the year, just behind Car Seat Headrest and AAL. So, do you have a previous opinion? I'm sure you know Beach House. Um, and in fact, I think we talked about the lead single, Lemon Glow, back when we were still doing b and So what were you kind of expecting, thinking, going into this? Uh, yeah, I hate Beach House. I always have. Uh, so oh I was uh, expecting to hate this. Wow. Okay. Um, I enjoy Beach House. I've never been like the biggest fan. I remember I saw them around 2010 or 11 or something after Teen Dream had come out. Uh, they were opening for Vampire Weekend and they were like much, much better than Vampire Weekend. And I kind of knew them and had listened a little, but it was like that show made me a fan. And I've listened to every album since and have indeed felt like it's always good, but just getting predictable. And it's like, it's not like the John Hopkins, you know, problem where it's predictable, you know, in, in a bigger sense, but it's just like they invented a distinct sound and like somebody like the strokes or something they're kind of trapped in it mm -hmm. and i was in fact surprised that it, it had remained like enjoyable as long as it did but i had no expectations of this being good and in fact after listening to lemon glow i was kind of like you know god damn i i can't believe we got to do this again <laughs> you know i really didn't believe it would get a bnm because i just thought it was it was over but Alas, it got the highest uh, score of the year so far, as you mentioned. So let's try to describe the sound and uh, perhaps the subject matter of Seven. Yeah, um, you know, I don't have like the super, you know, most familiarity with uh, with the older Beach House records. You know, I I've heard them. Um, I just never enjoyed it, so I never got deep, deep into it. So I can't really speak too much on how different it is to the other ones. Um, but here, you know... Uh, you're getting a lot of reverb again, uh, which I do know is 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 a part of of the other beach house things. Um, I'm trying to like not give opinions uh, while while giving the sound, <laughs> and it's very difficult. Um, it sort of sounds like uh, sort of sounds like My Bloody Valentine if you got rid of everything interesting. Oh my um, god! Okay, if you got rid of like the guitars, yeah, yeah, probably. But, but yeah, everything interesting. Um, okay. Yeah, it, it's like the vocals from uh, My Bloody Valentine. Um, you know, you can't really ever understand what she says. You know, you hear a word right. here and there or whatever. Um, and then it's like, you know, scents and whatnot, but so like reverb washed. It, it's like a, it's like a, you know, My Bloody Valentine's like got a little heaviness to it. Um, it just seems like this giant wall of sound. Um, whereas like uh, Beach House is kind of going for the same thing but instead of like a giant like brick wall of sound it's like you're you're lost in like a a, a, a ocean so you know some sort of like wavy uh yeah. reverb drown you know it's like a much more like gentle um yeah. version of shoegaze um and, and you know i guess that that's just what dream pop is in, in general but you know it's like a yeah. much gentler uh nicer version of my bloody Valentine. nicer meaning like literally nicer yeah, yeah, yeah. not not better okay. sounding so i mean you get like <laughs> definitely my bloody valentine vibes i guess because they were like whispery you know close to the microphone yeah. type vocals and everything uh but you're right it's like very it's like soft and gentle and yet you know to con contrast this with their previous work you know sonic boom who 
you know, he produced like that MGMT album, Congratulations, which I like a lot, which we talked about on the podcast. <clears throat> he also produced like the last couple Panda Bear albums, which I think are so underrated. And I really, really enjoy Tomboy and then that like Panda Bear meets the Grim Reaper album. And he's got a very distinct style that I think really, really complements and kind of rejuvenates the Beach House sound because you were kind of getting at this. It doesn't feel like a wall of sound, but it feels like a very sort of minimalist sound a lot of the mm-hmm. times. Like there's like a simple drum machine, you know, often quite slow and, and mellow. Um, and then there will be like, you know, what sounds like one synth you know like not even a big lush chord but just like some big like bass note or something is like the center of the song and it's just mixed in a way that fills the whole space and then like her vocals will be double tracked um plenty of reverb but like they're like mixed completely like left and then right channel so it's like just a few sparse elements are filling your whole head and you know the guitar is almost always just like a little bit of like adorning the top of this quite minimal construction. And I know that like beach house fans will kind of say that that that's like kind of always been their thing, but I swear to God, the mixing makes it sound huge with like, but minimal at the same time. It's kind of paradoxical, but you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. Uh, There's only two people in that band, right? Yeah. Yeah. It like, it like sounds like two people, you know, but, but not in a, not in a negative way. Like it sounds like two people, uh, making like a lot of sound uh yeah i don't i don't really know how to explain it well but you know it, it's empty while i and i think it's, i think it's like because everything or a lot of the things have like so much reverb on it you know it gives it like a lot more uh room and stuff than it than it like actually yeah. occupies and so it like sort of and I think here they honestly do play sometimes with like um, leaving out the reverb on things and right, like right. the drum machine sometimes like is pretty like dry sounding and yeah. you know that that kind of like creates a, a a weird dynamic between yeah, yeah. between it being like very full and very empty. I, I think I think minimalist is is like actually um, fairly apt description at at, at times here on, on this record. Yeah, and there's certainly times where they do kind of add layers and it like sort of crescendos in like a lush, you know, way. Um, But for the most part, it's quite minimal, I think. You know, sometimes, you know, the reverb is used kind of sparingly in interesting ways where like that, like this big, you know, bass um, sound, you know, will be like, you know, I think like on Pay No Mind, there's like a huge, like like a crunchy kind of like bass synth, like that is just the main thing on the track. and it's you know crunchy and like distorted sounding um it doesn't sound like a reverby wash it sounds like a really pleasant you know like a i almost can't describe it you know like how a lovely like you know square way of sounds or something yeah you know it's just like got that nice like buzz to it and um there's a lot of use to that and i think a lot of that like those touches how everything is kind of like the main so the main because the main thing is often like this bass synth or like sometimes a bass line um Several tracks gave me like very strong, um, you know, cure disintegration yeah. vibes. You know, did did you? I felt like that was kind of a, a cool thing. I feel like not enough people rip off like one of the best albums ever. Honestly, that's true. Yeah, you you don't uh, hear a ton of disintegration <laughs> rip off. More more people rip off disintegration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And then a couple, you know, sometimes like the guitar adorning things will have like a nice, you know, like the way that New Order uses like a clean guitar line you know um kind of plucky but then strummed sometimes and um you know so i had like a nice like a post-punky darkness and i would definitely say that this is much darker than beach house has been um and also like less i mean maybe contributing to the darkness is it's a bit less melodic to me a lot of the tracks are very like kind of static and more about like just hovering there than you know, people. I saw people speculate online, like maybe her voice is going or something, because she used to have these like really soaring kind of hooks, you know, and her voice like never really. I mean, it just stays like in this breathy My Bloody Valentine kind of area, and it, it, it like the tracks are like monotonous, in my opinion, in a good way. But did you get this sense of like darkness and kind of monotony? I, I did, and and because of that, I, I will say that of the like Beach House records that I've heard um this is definitely like the one i've 
Maybe, maybe it was because I was forced to listen. To, you know, all the other ones I listened to a couple right. times and said this isn't for me. And this one I had to listen to a ton. But you know, I, I think I enjoyed this one more than I ever enjoyed any of the other ones. And it was because it was like sort of you know darker and you know like sort of ripping off things I like, uh, like post punk yeah. and and My Bloody Valentine and whatnot. You know, that said, I didn't think it was like super super interesting this was another record i had kind of trouble when i finished like remembering anything about it you know right, right. um i feel like it just kind of is a is a whole like just wash uh you know i had to like really force myself to feet to to pay attention um to this record yeah i mean it's another album we talked about this with dj cozy last week where it's kind of like to me simultaneously Everything sounds kind of the same, mm-hmm. and there's not a lot of like cohesiveness to the album. Like at the same time, you know, no, yeah, you lean one way or the other. And, and I agree. Uh, it's like everything. It's it's because it's like a little formulaic, but like that doesn't necessarily make like a cohesive album. It just makes mm-hmm. an album where every song sounds the same. Like the last, you know, like the last song. I think a cohesive album is something that like plays as like one piece um right you know something that that you know my beautiful dark twist of fantasy you know none of the songs in that like really sound like the song before it but they all sound like they belong on the same record this they all sound like they belong on the same record because they all sound basically the same as the song before it you know that might not be a great uh way to explain that but you know it my thing is that I think you could honestly just shuffle these tracks. Like, yeah, anywhere. exactly. Yeah, I think when when the like track listing doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't like Dark Spring doesn't seem like the opening track, and and right, right, Last Ride. Yeah, I mean, they, it's got the name Last in it, so why not make it the last right. song? You know, it just, just kind of always feels like that. It's not like yeah, Pay No Mind needs to come right after Dark Spring, and Lemon Glow needs to be third. You know. That that's when an album is like a cohesive, you know, piece of of work. This just sounds like eleven songs that yeah, yeah. you, you could a hundred percent shuffle and nothing would change. And I think that you know they they were kind of going for that, or you know they they've they've said in interviews that they usually um, would like to rehearse stuff and they would like to keep things um, in a way that they could play them live, and that was like the most important thing to them. They would rehearse it like crazy. Um, and then record very quickly because everything was like ready to go. And then they would tour and songs sound exactly like they do on the album, basically. And um, this was the first time that they kind of, you know, let themselves, you know, just hang out in the studio for like 11 months and just record as ideas came to them and then mess with them, scrap them, start them over, that kind of stuff, right? That I think most bands do normally. And it really creates this vibe where, I don't know, if on past beach house albums it felt they felt more like records you know teen dream i will admit is like really one of the best albums of you know i mean not like number top five for me but like of the decade so far you know it's definitely like hanging in there somewhere top 20 and it's you know got like a really nice arc you know it really it really like goes someplace and it feels like a live show i don't know if they think about this and probably they don't play it in order ever but you know, it feels like a live show does like maybe as they wrote it, they thought, okay, this, you know, needs to come next and blah, blah, blah. And next we need this kind of song and blah, blah, blah. And this fits here. Um, this just seems like, honestly, I'm sure they put some effort into that, but it just feels like, it feels like as the song, as they got the song done, they just put it in the track list, you know? Yeah. I, I completely agree with you. It, it, it just, there, there seems to be no rhyme or reason to the, the track listing here. And maybe, you know, I, I, we've talked about it before. Like, maybe we're past that as a, as a sure. music listening society. Maybe that doesn't matter that much anymore. Um, yeah. But I think it's, you know, I don't think it's there yet for the, like, indie rock kind of world. Like, I think that's still sort right, of an right. album uh, type world. I think, I think hip hop is, is moving past it a little quicker. You know... It's honestly quite interesting because, you know, we were listening to this and I don't want to jump ahead, but, you know, I've been listening to this alongside of Playboy Cardi, you know, for the last couple of weeks. And, you know, I I sort of sense like on this record, a hip hop influence because that's how you mix like hip hop music is like the bass, you know, synth line is the front and center thing. It fills the whole space. And then, you know, it's just sort of mixed in a way that like is hip hop ish without really being hip hop. Um, I feel like that'll mislead people, but maybe it'll make sense once you've listened to it. Um, there are also songs like I think it's um, Black Car 
which has like quite a i don't want to say funky but like a, a nice beat to it with like a little synth line going um almost like r&b ish like barely um and i think there are a couple touches throughout we talked about lemon glow how it's got that like kind of like mm, 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 song or like sound running through it yeah um like a little touch that saves every song from sounding the same um but like we said the shuffling like the just being able to shuffle this in any order makes it kind of a like exhausting listen even though it's not that long i mean i, I love this song lose your smile okay and it's got like a nice strummed acoustic guitar actually and it's it, it feels like a closing song and then it just it even has like this nice big fade out and like this kind of like looping like kind of just lovely end of the end of the road kind of thing and then it's just like you basically get three more closing songs mm. in a row yeah like any of those could have closed it and they kind of all do the same trick of like how they just kind of like you know have that like kind of you know just goes and just sort of fades out and maybe that's the beach house formula but that was like sort of a made it exhausting like you can't listen to that many fucking closing tracks in a row. <laughs> i think when you do that whole like closing thing where it just fades out it's like that that sort of indicates i did not know how to end this song <laughs> yeah um which which is maybe indicative of them like r- r- you know writing in the studio and record you know i, I feel like if you rehearse yeah, songs yeah. out like i guess they normally did you, you kind of eventually will l- figure out what the end of the song should be i guess um, so, yeah. but yeah that always kind of annoys me when a l- when Oh, album has multiple songs that that just fade out i feel like you, you, yeah on a record you get like two or three of those and then you know yeah and you get i should lazy. just say that i'm not i'm not opposed to fade outs um as a as a thing because it seems to sort of like imply oh this thing would just sort of float on forever and that's like a, a fitting vibe to give on any beach house song pretty much but it works sometimes you can't do it like back to back nah. to back it, it really is like it, not cheapen, a, not a, it cheapens the trick yeah it does and you know for both good and bad i would say that this whole record has this kind of like just hovering vibe like i mentioned it every, like every track has almost like a closing song kind of like you know the sun is setting kind of feel or something and there's some nice like changes here um i will say that like the hooks aren't as strong but as you listen to this i feel like it's a bit of a grower i mean were there any songs that started to kind of work their way into your brain because i felt like every time i would finish this record i would be like oh it's a little bit exhausting and then when i'd start over i'd be like oh yeah each song i'd be like oh yeah i remember this one this one's pretty good and then you know like that that french named one lin lin, lin Canu or whatever however the fuck. Um, <laughs> you know it's got that cool like kind of um it's one of the few that sort of changes it up a little bit where there's like a bunch of vocals 